What's up fishing addicts? Thank you for tuning in today. If you're new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe so that you can see all of our entertaining and educational stuff we've got. We have a little bit of something for everybody out there. Uh, I'm Kevin Gray with Kevin Gray's Guide Service and today we're going to jump into Bobber Fishing 101 and specifically we're going to talk coho. Stay tuned, we're going to show you all that stuff right now. All right guys, so the very first thing we're gonna start with when it comes to float fishing for coho is the rod. You're gonna wanna pick a rod that's at least nine foot, preferably nine and a half to 10 and a half foot, and anywhere from an eight to 12 or eight to 17 pound rating, and a medium action is gonna be perfect. To go with that, I like to pick a reel that's either a 30 or a 35, or some of them will be a 3000 or 3500 series, but a good reel that's gonna hold plenty of braided line, and it's also gonna feel good in your hand and balance well with the rod. You don't need a great big clunky reel when doing this stuff. A nice balanced setup is gonna be comfortable for fishing, and it's gonna get you fishing all day long. As far as line goes, I really like preferably a 30 pound braided line. And especially with clients, I like to run a high vis, so a yellow or a bright green braid, but that's not necessarily a rule. It's just something I like to do. But the braided line is key because when float fishing, it serves a couple purposes. It floats on the water, so it, you can mend your line, allowing for a natural drift with the bobber and it doesn't have any stretch it's really durable so when you do get a bite and set hook on the fish you're direct to the fish there's no stretch involved very little margin for error so i highly recommend a good performance braid for your main line when float fishing okay so when you go to actually set up for float fishing you're going to need a few things a few key items in order to accomplish that the very first thing we're going to start with is a stopper you need something to stop your float from sliding up your line and it's going to control how deep you are fishing to get your bait to those fish. We've got a couple different kinds of stops here I'm going to show you. Both work really well. These are little rubber stops here and you, you feed your line through a hole, pull the rubber stop onto your line and that will provide a stop for your float. Or you can buy these pre-packaged little uh, Dacron high-vis bobber knots. These are only a couple bucks. You get like 50 of them. Really affordable and they're quick and easy. They come on a little tube. You slide that up your line, pull off the knot, discard the tube, and you just cinch your knot down on the line and you're ready to go. Always back up once you get your stopper on the line with a little bead that comes with it. Otherwise that knot can potentially slide down through your float and it's ineffective. Next, I like to pick out my float. For coho, I'm a big fan of, you know, many different brands are gonna work, but the key part of a float is its weight rating. I like a half ounce up to a three quarter ounce, generally speaking, for tributary coho float fishing. Um, sometimes in some situations, if the water's deeper or a little heavier current, you can go up to a one ounce float with these, but generally you're gonna find a half ounce up to three quarter ounce is gonna get the job done. I also like to, for a little extra visibility, before I put my float on, I'll add a little corky, something bright like that. Adds just a little extra body and visibility to that float setup, and we'll show you that more when we get down to casting and um, showing some methods in that department. Next, um, I am a big fan of balancing my float with the proper uh, sized inline weight. For this, I really like an inline weight. Some people um, will use a cannonball, but these come ready to go. You tie your main line to one end, your leader and hook to the other end, and you're good to go. This is a half ounce inline float, and it, it balances perfectly with a half ounce float. For leader material, generally speaking, for tributary coho, I'm a big fan of just a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. I like fluorocarbon for a couple reasons. It's a little little tougher, not as stretchy, um, lasts a little longer. It also 
has a tendency to disappear underwater. Light doesn't refract off fluorocarbon like it would monofilament. So I like to have a nice um, 12 pound fluorocarbon leader for that. The last part and probably one of the more important parts is gonna be your hook. Tributary coho, I'll find myself using either a one-aught or a two-aught light wire mustad hook. This one here is the uh, 92604, it's a light wire. This one's a one-aught, uh, laser sharp hook. It's just the right size to hold those nickel to quarter size baits of eggs that I like to fish for coho. And being a light wire, you're gonna get um, excellent penetrating uh, hook point into that fish's mouth. So because coho aren't a, a heavy, big, heavy bodied fish, you need all that extra penetration to get a good hook in their mouth and a light wire hook is gonna do that for you. So now, once we've covered all of our useful parts that we need in order to effectively float fish, let's run through the setup. We're gonna start, like I said before, with our bobber stopper knot. And I'm gonna use these little black stoppers here. Um, they're quick and easy. I'm gonna use two of them. And I find that using two of them, you get a little extra stopping power. It's not gonna slip on you as easily and mess things up. So here we go. We take the end of our braid, feed it through one hoop. I like to go through an inch, maybe two inches. Grab the little stopper that is on that hoop and just pull. And you'll pull that puppy right up onto your line, just like that. There it is. Now we'll do that with a second stopper. Feed it through, grab the stop, pull it through. Now we have two stoppers on the line, nice and tight. Those aren't gonna go anywhere. They're not gonna slip while you're fishing. That's gonna keep you fishing. Next, we have to put on our little bead. And little trick, sometimes the tip of your braided line, the end is a little frayed up. I like to just wet it a little bit and get an extra point, just like that. We take our bead and we'll just feed it through the hole here. It's a small hole, just like that. Okay, we've got it on, just like so. Now what I'm gonna do so I, I don't potentially drop this and I lose it, I'm gonna slide this stuff up and out of the way for now. Next, we'll take our bright little corky, add a little bit of something on top of the float for visibility. Thread that puppy up. Take our little float here, thread it on, right through the colored end, which is the top, out the bottom, thread it up. Okay. Next, we'll tie on our inline sinker. And there's a few ways, a few different knots you can use. I'm gonna show you a really easy, quick one that's tough. So we'll go through, one time with the, with the line, just like so. I'll kind of gather this up with, with two hands. I'm gonna make a, what I'm gonna do is just make a little circle, just like that, and lay these two lines together, just like that. And I'm gonna take my tag end and wrap about four times around the hoop and the main line. Now that I've wrapped four times, I'm gonna grab that tag end and pull it. You don't have to cinch it up super tight, but get that knot started. Then grab your main line, slide that puppy all the way down, and then give it a little cinch and it's good to go. Lastly, you'll trim your tag end off and you're ready to go there. Okay, so now for our really important part, our leader and our hook. What I've done here is I've tied an egg loop knot to our one-aught mustad using our 12-pound fluorocarbon. Uh, if you're wondering how to tie this egg loop knot, there's a lot of avenues on YouTube, a lot of links you can search and learn how to tie this knot. I highly suggest it. It's gonna come in use for bobber fishing coho. So now let's tie this puppy onto our bobber inline setup. And this, I just like to use a, a cinch knot or improved cinch knot, real easy. We'll go through one end, 
come back and I like to put a finger in here to, to create a, a hole. And we'll just pinch and I'll wrap about six or seven times. Three, four, five, six. Now we grab that end and we'll feed it through that hole that my finger created, just like so. Grab that all. Don't forget to wet your knot and slowly start pulling that puppy together, just like that. Okay. And you can use your fisherman's third hand, your teeth, to kind of help pull that knot together, pulling on the tag end. But that's a good sturdy knot right there. That's gonna be a good one for your leader. And lastly, we'll trim off the tag end. Now, the next really important part is applying a bait to your hook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by cutting a piece of my eggs at about a nickel to quarter size here, nice little chunk. And then I'm gonna open up my egg loop and get it ready. Open it up about enough to where you can easily slip over your eggs when you put it on the hook. We'll take our chunk of eggs and I like to find where the skein is, so that skin portion of the eggs. And I like to go through at least one time, through that skein, out the other. Sometimes if it's the right shape, you can go through twice, just like that. Drop your egg loop just behind your eggs and pull with the other hand and cinch it up. You don't wanna cinch it all the way tight and cut those eggs just enough to hold them on the hook. And this is what you're left with right here. A nice little nugget of bait that those coho are gonna just go crazy for. So now let's talk really quick about finding a place to bobber fish and selecting depth and making our casts effectively. So here we've found a spot that has some depth to it and the current is about a walking pace. This water is anywhere from two to seven feet deep and it's perfect pace, it's about a, a brisk walk. And the other thing to confirm this is a good spot is we just had a coho roll across the river from us. So we know we're in a good spot. Now, what I do when I come to a spot like this is I trust my polarized glasses in helping me judge the depth of where I'm gonna be making my cast. So I'm gonna pick the very first Spot where I can't see bottom anymore, I'm gonna try to run my bobber through there. And it looks like that spot's between three and four feet deep. So we'll come to our bobber knot, we'll slide it to where the distance between the knot and our bait is three to four feet. Um, and we'll see how that plays out and we'll make a cast right now. When I'm picking my cast, I'll cast quartering slightly upstream. Once my float hits the water, I'm always gonna pay attention to the line on the water and be mending while it goes down. Picking up that line and setting it down upstream of the float. Now, if I wanna keep letting my float go downstream, what I'll do is I'll open my bale and control the line going out with my pointer finger, just like that. Little by little, just like a puppy on the leash. Once I think I've drifted down far enough, I'll reel in, we'll cast again. So we know that we weren't set too deep because our float was nice and straight up and down and didn't drag bottom. What I'm gonna do really quick is show you what it looks like if you are fishing too deep and you'll end up needing to correct that. What's gonna happen if you're fishing too deep is your float is gonna tilt downstream and you may even see it bounce and drag bottom, but right there, it's telling me it's dragging the bottom. My lead is eventually gonna snag up. So we'll wanna reel in. If you see that happen, shallow up six inches, try again, until you get that vertical presentation. Once you've figured out how deep your run is that you're fishing, just pick it apart like a grid. Start close in, cast out, your next cast a couple feet further, a couple feet further, until you feel you've covered the entire run. All right, addicts, thank you so much for tuning in today. And be sure to like and subscribe down below. And drop any comments if you have any suggestions for any uh, educational stuff or exciting stuff you'd like to see us do in the future. We're always watching and uh, pursuing new things to cover. 
Uh, with that said, uh, I do have a few open seats in November. If you want to get at me at Kevin Gray's Guide Service on Facebook or 503-935-7538. And for you guys out there chasing coho right now, let us know how it's going in the comments down below. We want to see what's up out there. Thanks, guys.